discussion tonight for um, contract negotiation, litigation, and real property, things that we can't discuss in front of everybody. Uh, so here we are in, uh, in public session. We're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. So as we do normally, we're going to open with the public forum. If anyone in the public has something to say, come on up and say it. Uh, I am actually going to start as a selectman, but as a town's payer and taxpayer and town's member. Uh, today, the town of Hopkinton buried one of the uh, greatest people in my eyes to, to live in Hopkinton. Uh, his name was Bob Lavoy. Um, he would have been 92 on the 26th of October. Um, he's a guy that anybody who has lived in town for any amount of time has come across him in some form. Uh, Bob coached me in youth football. Bob had a lot to do with the church. He was married for 53 years, <clears throat> which are all very impressive. Um, but if you knew Bob, the things that Bob was most impressed, I mean, uh, most fond of was his family first with his five kids and his his grandkids and <clears throat> uh, his time in the service uh, he was a, a member of the United States Marine Corps he was a, a veteran of the Battle of Iwo Jima in February and March of 1945 uh, he was also in the Battle of the Chosen Reservoir November December 1950 uh, I had the luxury to see him extensively over the last few years <clears throat> and when we talked we spoke he spoke of his wife his family and the Marine Corps mm -hmm. so I would like to take just a moment if you uh, if people don't mind and just a quick moment of silence for Mr. Lavoie I believe he's earned it um, thanks Thank you. Rest in peace, Mr. Lavoie. Does anyone else have anything for public forum? Great. So we will move to our consent agenda. Um, section one are the board minutes. Uh, we'll consider approving the September 25 Board of Selectmen minutes. Uh, section two is the marathon fund requests. We'll consider approving the following Marathon Fund request, Council of Aging for 3,000, Marathon Fund Committee for six scholarships for Hopkins residents graduating seniors uh, for 9,000, and the Hopkins Runners Club for renting six portable toilets for the 12-1-2018 second annual 10K race in memory of Andrew Wellzell to chase Harris portable toilets for $729.36. Anyone want to break any of those out? Break out number three. Okay. So I will request a motion to accept uh, number one and number two. I'm sorry. What's number three? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, number two. Sorry, number two. Sorry. Okay. So I will request a motion to accept the consent agenda, consent agenda uh, item number one. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Carries. Okay, Mr. Catino? Yeah, I was just um, the, actually, the, the third one here, the Hopkins Runners Club. Um, I just didn't know, uh, I, I don't know if, th if this went through the um, Marathon Fund Committee or not. Um, it, it, it must have, but I didn't know that we gave money to stuff that was outside of uh, like the high school and the senior center and, and that kind of stuff. Do, have we done this before? For, any, for, for charity races? Because you know, I'm, I'm not sure if uh, if we give it to one that we don't give it to uh, to other charities. Not that I'm against any charity or anything, but uh, if if <coughs> through the chair, if the question is 
whether the Marathon Fund Committee has issued funds to charities, yes, they have in the past. If the question is whether they've issued funds to charity runs in the past, um, I have to research that. I don't know if we've done it specifically to a race, but I know that we've issued funds to various activities around the community uh, over the years, all kinds of different things. Uh, really, their primary goal is to support you know, health and well-being in Hopkinton, and I think a 10K race, other than for your knees, is a pretty healthy thing to do, so um, I would be in favor of it. I just want to make sure there was, there was some precedent for it, that's all, because um, you know, usually it's for uh, you know, hockey, um, volleyball, basketball, the, uh, you know, the first one with the uh, senior center and that. I just wanted to make sure that, uh, uh, that there was precedent for it. Okay, even though it does, it does fit in with the, um, the, as you said, the health and well-being and running and all that. So I, I guess I'm good with it. Mr. Chair, uh, back in 2017, we issued funds to the Hopkinton Runners Club. <coughs> okay. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve item two in the consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All against? Carries. All right, moving on to our 645 agenda item, board appointments. The Board of Selectmen will continue, consider making the following appointments. Uh, Veterans Celebration Committee, Linda Murray, Election worker Arlene Casasa, and the Board of Selectmen will consider affirming the following town manager's appointments uh, accounting manager, town accountant, and the procurement and grants manager. Mr. Chair, I move that we break the question in two. Okay. And a move that we appoint uh, the Veterans Celebration Committee individual Linda Murray and the election worker Arlene Casasa. Second. All in favor? Mr. Chair, are either of these folks here this evening? <coughs> I know Mike's here, but Mike, do you have any input on this at all? You good? Yeah, I'd like to say something. Please. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Sorry. No, uh, you know, Linda uh, um, started serving on the committee uh, uh, to finish out an expired term, and um, I might have overlooked an email for her when she was supposed to be reappointed, and there's a little communication gap, so. She wants to stay on the committee, and th this is just a process we have to go through, apparently, to keep her on the committee, is to appoint her again tonight. Mm. Thank you. And uh, I just want to say she's uh, quickly become a very important and active member of the committee and really working w out well. Okay. okay. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, sir. Take a vote. Okay. Motion seconded. Okay, motion seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All against? Carries. Okay, part two. Uh, Board of Selectmen will continue, um, so can consider affirming the following town manager's appointments. Accounting manager, town accountant, and the procurement and grants manager. Do we have anyone here for that? Yes, um, through the chair, with your permission, may I also invite uh, the HR Director, Maria Casey, to join us at the table? I suppose you may. Good evening. Evening. Yes. And firstly, I am presenting uh, David Nalchajiana uh, as the recommended uh, candidate for the finance, uh, for, for the town accountant, accounting manager position. Okay. Um, I, I should say that in my 30 years working in public service, uh, this is the first time I have sat in a room um, with two candidates that were presenting who both have uh, uh, CPAs. Uh, and, and, and I believe looking around, seeing the presence of our finance team here, this may be the largest footprint of town accountants or finance people I've ever been around uh, here in Hopkinton. Congratulations, Dave. Uh, Dave comes to us uh, uh, as, as a very qualified town accountant. Uh, also, bolstered by, uh, his application was also strengthened by uh, his work as uh, what some, some now refer to as the expert aficionado in Munis. Uh, 
is very conversant in Munich and is going to uh, be of tremendous help to the finance team uh, as we roll out uh, our, our Munich modules. Uh, he's the former, now, former uh, finance director for the town of Harvard, was the town accountant for the town of West Newbury for three years, town accountant for the town of Holliston for five years. Uh, he was the assistant town accountant uh, in Westford for three years, and also worked for the town of Wesley uh, as the technology manager, uh, interim town accountant, and assistant school business manager for seven years. What we heard from the people who we spoke to regarding uh, Dave, they told us the following. Uh, he has very high technical related skills, uh, is an avid student of application software. Uh, he knows how to get the most out of financial software, including Munis. He's always willing to service frontline departments. Uh, and, and clearly, you'll be getting phone calls from uh, all town departments in that regard. <laughs> Excellent, that's great. Yeah, he's a hard worker and is an avid problem solver. Uh, it needs to be said too that uh, as part of uh, collecting his uh, background information, we also spoke to the long-time Holliston Town Administrator, Paul Labo, who spoke glowingly about Dave's um, public service. And uh, with that, I'll let the board ask any questions that you might have for Dave. Thank you very much. Uh, how are you doing, David? I'm doing very well. Yourself? Good. Hanging in there. Um, so I'm going to open this up to the board, let them uh, kind of depose you a little bit, and we'll go sure. from there. That's great. Well, we, didn't get a, we didn't get a packet with either the backgrounds. Is yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> for the, for the, for that the, yes, the, yes, you meant for us not to get it, or, or no. yes, there is one and I didn't see it? Yes. Here's why. Um, the HR department has done a very good job accelerating the hiring process and for the simple reason of maintaining the applicants, uh, the individual's uh, confidentiality, we did not include the, 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 the material in your meeting, but we wanted to bring them before you uh, early enough so that they can get started sooner rather than later. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it just, it just makes us a little blinder than to, than to ask, you know, to ask any questions, that's why. But anyway, Bill, thank you very much for, for coming. Thank you for considering us. Thank um, you. It's a, it's, a position, it's a position that um, we, we really want to fill. Um, you know, the, the, the one thing I remember about Munis is when we first implemented it, it was, it was difficult, people coming up to speed, but it fleshed out a lot of accounts. We found money when we went, went to it. That's so always it, good. It was a pain in the neck, but then all of a sudden, Norman was finding money left and right to use for other stuff. I think we finished. I hope he that. keeps that practice up. Yeah, that was pretty good. Mm -hmm. But no, really, thank you. This uh, just you, you work for some some great communities. Uh, uh, I I, used, I worked at uh, Triton Regional. Oh, uh, did you really? Forty yeah. years ago, so I know West Newbury, and uh, Holliston, Harvard. That's great. So really, thank you very much for uh, for considering us. We really uh, really wanted to fill this position. Thank you. Sir, so uh, normally there's five of us. This is a five-person board. Mm -hmm. No, I was. I was unfortunately I wasn't invited. Then. <laughs> sure. It's a, uh, N is a Nancy, A L C H A, J I A N. Sure. N A L C H A. J I A N. So, uh, did you know Norman or Elaine before you came to the hockey? I have worked with Norman in the past. In Westford? Um, in Westford and in Wellesley. So you're in. Okay. And Elaine's a Harvard resident, I think. Elaine is a Harvard resident, but we, have, <laughs> we haven't crossed paths, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> You want to give her mother's maiden name and her last four digits of her social media? No. So I think it's great. All the experience you have, the background you have, the good position that this is, right? It's a little bit different than some of the other positions you've had. Um, but I know Paul speaks highly of you, and Norman speaks highly of you, and Maria's got you on the top of the list here because we 
Yeah. Sure. Well, you know, the finance director position in Harvard is uh, you have to be multi-skilled and, and um, I, I think I bring quite a lot to the table to be able to fill, fulfill the role here um, as I understand it. So I look forward to it. Thank you so much. Yeah, so welcome aboard, David. Uh, again, we didn't get a chance to look at your resume, but if, uh, if Norman's gonna bring you on, Norman knows that the three people here are pretty tough on him. <laughs> He's gonna bring in uh, some employees. It's a direct reflection of him and his yearly bonuses and raises and things like that. So uh, Norman is gonna bring in some solid candidates. So he doesn't get a bonus, that's right. I was looking um, forward to one, Brian. Yeah, no, no bonuses allowed. Yeah, that's right. So um, historically, you get some pretty big shoes to fill. I'm the townie on the group. Uh, when Mr. Westerling comes up, I tell him he's no Bob Bartlett. You get some big shoes to fill to, to fill Maureen Dwinell's shoes. Sure. And, uh, and I wish you the best of luck. And I know Maria and Norma wouldn't let you come in here if you wouldn't do that. So uh, best of luck. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Chair, I'm going to the board selectman affirm Tom Andy's appointment with David Al Chichian as senior county manager slash town Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. Carries. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much. Yeah, I will. All right. So up next is the procurement and grants manager. Yes. Um, yes. Mr. Chair, <coughs> I am honored and humbled to introduce Benjamin Sweeney uh, as the town's procurement and grants manager. Uh, this is a position that was recently created and funded through the FY19 uh, budget process, and it needs to be said, it needs to be said, his grandfather was the town's treasurer several years ago. Oh, all right. He yeah. is... Yes, his grandfather. It also needs to be said, he is a fine graduate of Hopkinton High School. Uh, he's joining us uh, coming from the Archdiocese of Boston as the assistant controller. He also occupied the finance manager, supervising accountant and senior accountant positions uh, at the Archdiocese. He also was the grants accountant for CTA Inc. and also a senior audit associate for Grant Thornton LLP in Boston. As I said, Hopkinton High graduate. People we spoke to revealed the following to us. Ben has a tremendous accounting foundation and is technically a very strong accountant with excellent communication, presentation, and customer service skills. Uh, he has effectively handled employees with varying levels of accounting acumen and worked effectively with their strengths. Uh, as you know, since this is a new position in town, we're also counting on Ben uh, to go out and educate all of us on procurement. Uh, we, uh, we pride ourselves in the big C. We comply, we comply, we comply with the laws, and Ben is going to be a big part of educating us in that regard. Uh, he is detail-oriented, curious, and he likes to figure things out, and he's a quick learner. He manages time extremely well and performs under pressure despite frequent interruptions. He's a professional and a trusted employee. Uh, I believe, I think also, he's going to be a tremendous value add to the organization since he will be driving our grants program. All right, welcome, Ben. Thank you. Um, I will go ahead and open this up to the board, starting with Mr. Herr. <laughs> oh, yes, so funny. <laughs> Good evening. How are you? Doing very well, thanks. How are you? Good, thank you. So HHS? Yes. Good man. Do you live in the area? I, I do. I live in Holliston. Okay. We'll forgive you for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's nice and close. Um, so this is a new position, so we're gonna have a little dialogue here out with you and with these guys as well. Uh, don't read into any of this, I'm just trying to understand it, sort of all this. And I think it's a great position for the town. We've needed this for many years, and as we've grown, it's become very obvious that we need to get a little bit more structure around the whole process of procurement and grants. 
So who will Ben report to? He will report to the town manager um, and on some issues may report to the town accountant. Okay. Does that sit well with you? Yes. Does that make sense from uh, a, sort of a compliance perspective? Uh, yes, I believe it does. Yeah, I, th I, I think it does too. So, yeah, I think it's one of those positions that could have a dual role and kind of a dual reporting structure. So that happens quite a bit, I think. Um, okay. And so where will this, where will Ben sit? Where will he physically be located? He will be in the same Down in the party room with the rest of the finance team? <laughs> no. He's going to be on the second floor together uh, with, uh, with, with the finance team uh, in, in the former selectman town manager's office. So that was finance and who else down there at the party? Who was down there? <laughs> Um, okay. Tight lip. Tight lip. <laughs> yeah, and the chief's back there laughing too. I think he was at the party as well. <laughs> Snitches. Get. He was the bartender. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm still trying to get my head around it a little bit, uh, the position, but I think Ben sounds like a perfect fit for the job. Uh, the job is going to evolve. We've not had this job. Like, we know what he does. We know what she does. We know what the party group does. We know what the fire chief does. We know what everyone does for the most part. We don't know what this person does, right? What Ben's going to do. So be, be patient with us because we may ask some stupid <coughs> questions along the way uh, or the town manager through the town manager's office sort of ask some questions. We're not supposed to involve ourselves in day-to-day -day operations. It's in the charter that we not do that, but on occasion some of us make a fatal error and do that on occasion. Um, so if that happens, be patient because we're gonna try to figure this thing out together a little bit too. You can teach us a lot, I think about procurement and about grants and the process to be successful in both those uh, areas, uh, which is gonna be really good for the town. But I think there's gonna be a little bit of patience required on all sides as we kind of get this thing up and rocking and rolling. Uh, but being an HHS guy, I'm sure you're gonna do perfectly fine. So thank you for joining the team and we look forward to working with you. Thank you and uh, I'd be honored to serve, thank you. Mr. Casino. Also, thank you very much for coming. Um, this, is, this, this has been a position that Norman and I have been talking about for the last, last few years, actually. Um, your, grants are just so important to municipalities. There's so much money out there, but um, you know, having someone with the, um, the time and the expertise to go out there and find them is the important thing. Um, you know, we, we have the, you know, the, the fire chief is always out there finding stuff, the police chief is out there finding stuff, and the um, and DPW director. But <coughs> when they're out there doing that, they're not doing some of the other things that they need to do. And, and, it's, a, and it's a position that can really make money for the town. It's, uh, it's not only pay for your own position, but, um, you know, come up with, uh, with money and services and products that the town needs that uh, can make everybody's life easier. You know, one of the things I've been pushing for for like the last four or five years, and the fire chief is back there, he'll smile as a, uh, for public safety, as a drone for public safety. I know there are grants out there everywhere for, for uh, municipal drones because it's something that, that, uh, that uh, both the fire and the police have been looking for. And boy, if you can get one of those fast, that would be wonderful. It'll be a lot time of people that will be smiling and saying, all oh, right, already paid for itself. <laughs> but again, thank you very much for coming, and um, uh, we're really pleased to have you on board. Thank you. When will the position start? In fact, I, I believe your start date is the 7th of uh, November. 13th. Oh, the 13th, sorry. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. November 13th. Yes. Okay. And are we budgeted for a full year on this thing? Sorry, Mr. Chair. Just yes, we are. So we'll get a little free cash at the end of this cycle for this one position. I'm looking at Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Put that in your notes, David. You need some potty money. Yeah, <laughs> apparently so. All right, Ben, what year did you graduate Hopkins in? 2003. 2003. All right, where'd you go to school after that? Assumption College. All right. Uh, so welcome aboard, assuming the Vote goes your way. Uh, it's you. always nice to see people from town come back and work in town. Um, you know, like like uh, Mr. Hurst said, the uh, Hopkins high grad coming back to work at the town hall is, is a pretty good thing. We like to see stuff like that happen. Um, so, and as Mr. Catino said, there's so much money out there in in, uh, in grants and procurement. 
uh, to have someone come in with your experience and your energy and with all the, um, you know, the, the good references that you got. Uh, it sounds like you're going to hit the ground running and uh, start making money for the town. And that's our goal to hire you is to make money for us. So thank you very much. Welcome to the uh, talking and assuming this vote goes your way. Thank you. Mr. Right. Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen affirm the town manager's appointment of Benjamin Sweeney as the procurement and grants manager. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any other comments? <laughs> Were that. All right. Um, all right. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Yeah. Again, through the chair, I, I really want to take this opportunity to thank uh, Maria Casey and the HR team for the work that they are doing in, in, in bringing us uh, some solid talent to, to our teams here at Town Hall. All right. So we will move to the, I see Kelly's here. A uh, special temporary alcohol license. Board of Selectmen will consider approving a special temporary alcohol license requested by Kelly Grill on behalf of the Hopkins Center for the Arts for an annual event to be held at the HCA, the first We Dream Gala on November 3, 2018, from 7 to 11 p.m. Startland Brewery and Marty's will be providing alcohol for the event, and the caterer is Metro West Catering. Uh, expected a number of attendees is 150 to 200. Welcome, Kelly. Hello, how are, how are you? you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Um, Mr. Kamalo, everything look good on this? The application was circulated to town review departments. Uh, there were some inspectional issues that were identified, and I believe uh, Kelly is working with the inspections team to resolve those issues. They came today, and it's all, all set. They should have sent an email yeah. okay. today. Um, so a question that I have on this is the Metro West Catering. <clears throat> mm -hmm. It says it's not an approved wholesale caterer. So uh, that's for alcohol. Uh, there are, um, in the area, per our agreement, there were certain um, caterers that had a specific ABCC license that we, as the HCA, were allowed to use without co having to come for this special one day. Yep. And Metro West is not one of them. Okay. Um, However, they're who we would like to use for this particular event, and so that's why we're coming. Okay. Uh, Mr. Catino, do you have anything on this? No, this is, uh, this is this second year. Third year. Third year. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Mr. Her? When we went through the whole lease process and the licensing and everything else, this was discussed as one of these things that we may do outside of that mm -hmm. norm. Uh, so I think this is in line with the agreement with the community in general, and I think since all this went into effect two or three years ago now, uh, there's been plenty of activity and very few comments or discussions or negative feedback, at least directed in, at, my, at, at me anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm very comfortable with how the place is being run, and I think this is a great event, and I fully support it. Okay. I'm make a motion. Uh, yeah, I can. Mr. Kamala, the motion sound good? Um, through the chair, with the inclusion of the um, the phrase "first we dream gala," which identifies the event. Mm -hmm. okay. Do we have the date in that motion, Mr. Catino? Yeah, yes, we do. Yeah. Okay. So we Second. Have a, okay. Any other comments? Mm. All right. So we will put it to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Carries. All right. Thank you, Kelly. Round one. Okay. I have one more. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, going to the next one, the request for extension of hours outside the lease agreement. Board of Selectmen will continue approving, will continue, consider approving a request from Kelly Grill on behalf of the Hopkins Center for the Arts for an extension of hours to serve alcohol and to end an event on New Year's Eve 12 18 
Under the current lease, service of alcohol ends at 9 p.m. and events that end at 9.30 a.m. It should be p.m., I'm sure. Um, HCA is requesting that the New Year's Eve event be allowed to serve alcohol until 12.30 a.m. and that the event end at 1 a.m. Mr. Kamalo, anything on this? Again, this is an issue that was discussed extensively uh, during the formulation of the lease. Um, we did subsequently, the board subsequently revisited, it, re revisited the issue. Um, and what, we're, what, what we've received from the HCA is that they're requesting an accommodation for one night, yep. which is New Year's Eve. Okay. Uh, Mr. Catino. Yeah, we, uh, we, uh, we did this, we granted the license last year. Yes. We had an extension last year because I went to it. Yes. Very, except that we didn't have the balloon to get the balloons going to work the, this year. We're going to work really hard. If not, we're going to do confetti. And we may just give it all up, but I, we, we want the balloons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the balloons are really fun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Okay. Mr. Herr? I have no comments. We're ready for a motion. I'm good. good. Mr. Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen approve an extension of hours to serve alcohol and to end an event on New Year's Eve 1231-18 with alcohol service ending at 1230 a.m. and the event ending at 1 a.m. for uh, the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. Second. All right. All in favor? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Any other comments? <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, carries. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you. All right. I'm going to be here for the Veterans Committee. Yeah, you're all set. Am I all set? Yep. Oh, you're right. Welcome aboard. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for staying on board. <laughs> all right. Uh, so we're a little bit early, but I think we can. Is any, uh, do we have someone from the. Running club? Yeah, there you go. All right. So the Board of Selectmen will consider approving applications for a temporary alcohol license and parade permit from Wade Marshall on behalf of the Hopkins Running Club. The event is for the second annual Hop Hopkin or Hopkinton? Is that a Hopkin typo? Ten. Hopkin. Hopkin 10. Ah, oh, there you go. Uh, Hopkin 10. Uh, oh, look at Ace that. <laughs> In honor of Hopkins resident Andy Welzel to be held on Saturday, December 1. 2018 from 6 a.m. to noon at Victory Field. Expected number of participants is 300. Um, Victory Field, is that Fruit Street? Yes. Mm, yes, yeah. yeah, it is. About the, 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 old, the old softball field. It, the yes. Baseball, soccer, yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 The one you can see right off of Fruit Street. Exactly, yeah. <clears throat> All right. Mr. Kamalo, everything look good on this? I understand uh, the application went through the permitting departments. Yes. Uh, this was discussed extensively with public safety as well. Yes. Yes. And all issues have been resolved. Yes. Good. Mm -hmm. Mr. Catino. Hey, whenever I see second, it means that we went through one and worked out, worked out the bugs and, you know, third's even better, tenth gets even better, but uh, I'm good with it. Mr. Her? So this is the one that we just did the porta potties for, correct? Yep. Right. Yes. Yep. Previously. Okay. Uh, no, I'm all good. I think it's great. Good. So I would normally just skip over this, but I want to take a quick second to mention what a great guy Andy Welzo was, yeah. and uh, a cause a cause for someone like he is uh, is a is a good cause in my in my eyes. He's been a, he was a good guy for a long, 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 long time. Not long enough, but a long time. We yeah. agree. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. So. Uh, I'll, I'll make a motion. Is this a, is this start line? Yes. Yes. And it just start line? Yes. Is that what it was last year? Yes. Yep. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the application for a special temporary alcohol license and, and parade permit for, from Wade Marshall on behalf of the Hopkinton Running Club uh, for the second annual Hopkin 10K road race event in order of Hopkinton Rens resident Andrew Wetzel to be held Saturday, December 1st, 2018 from 6 a.m. to 12 noon at Victory Field. Expect the number of participants is 300. Second. Okay, any other comments? How many runners <clears throat> were there last year? About 300. So about the same, you yeah. think? Yeah. 
Just short of that, I think. Yeah. Getting a little late in the year for massive crowds. Yeah. December. Yeah. Yeah. 10K. <laughs> yeah. 10K. 10K. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, you in? No. Okay. All right. Um, so I think we are ready for a vote. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. So I all set. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have fun. Thanks. Tim. All right, so the Board of Selectmen will consider approving a request from Amanda Fouché on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce for a banner to be placed across Main Street. The banner will advertise the holiday stroll on December 1, 2018. The banner will, uh, would be hung on November 19, 2018, allowing four days, 14 days maximum for the banner to be up per the zoning bylaw. In accordance to the zoning bylaw, the size of the banner may not exceed 75 square feet. The requested 160 square foot banner requires a special permit from the Board of Appeals. Mr. Kamala. Yeah, um, this is an issue that we have been discussing in the office. Um, the indication is that the banner as presented exceeds the allowed size requirement, and we have uh, advised the applicant to apply for a special permit to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay. So what's our stance on that? How long does that normally take, do you think, to get on the docket? <coughs> 30 days, 45 days, once you, once you apply. So that would... Something doesn't make sense here. Yeah, that's... Um, you know, if, if, if I may, to the chair. You know, uh, when uh, I was on the... Uh, on Zach, when, when we put this through, I don't think we realized the size of the banner, because I believe the banner that we put up for Family Day is bigger than... 75 square feet we just 25 put all, by three we put all the words on there and then it just that's what size it ended up being so i think that we you know maybe i should go in front of zach to make sure that we change this to make it uh, a nominal size because um you know this sounds uh, this sounds like a the size for this for the street and to make sure that the message gets across i don't know how that's going to help help this this issue right here but for the future so that we don't have to uh, go through uh, or have the applicants go through something like this for, for, for a, a banner that seems like a nominal size for going across a, that, that large street. Um, I have a mock-up of it here if anybody wanted to see it. But I guess the disconnect is by the time it gets on to the approval for the, for the appeals, it might not be in time to get the banner up. It, it'll take a week or so to print the banner. So, so a couple of questions, if I could, please. So there's, the banner today does not exist, correct? It does not exist, but no. Haven't we put a banner up for the holiday stroll in the past? No. no. Not that I'm aware of. So we put a banner up for, no. for Family Day. And we put banners up for Welcome to Hopkinton for, for, marathon. for the marathon. And any other banners? Then we do one for the three. We did one for the three hundred specific to the three hundred. Right. Um, those were bigger than seventy-five square feet. Yeah, I know. I, I don't think anybody. I don't, that's why I said I don't think we we looked at it. Okay. So who's going to complain if they put this banner up? I don't know. <laughs> well, now that you said it on television, I know a few people that have <laughs> Facebook groups up there would love to complain about us. <laughs> Well, they don't run anything. They just... It's very tasteful if you want to look at it. <laughs> it's already on the... I have it mocked up on the street what it would look like. Oh, if great. See it. But if you... So, but if it hasn't been... If it hasn't been... Um, me... Would now be the time to change the sizing of it so that we don't have... Because I'm concerned that you're not going to get this up in time. This has just got red tape written all over it. Right. Right, so we're trying to... What if you put two banners up, one under each other? <laughs> a 75 foot and a 75 foot. Um, like Billy Lynch says, that's thinking outside the box. That's true, that is. What's the size of this banner? I mean, it looks great. What's the size of that? That's four feet by 40 feet. It's the exact same as the Family Day banner. Okay, so Norma, what can we do here? There's nothing offensive about that whatsoever. 
And it is, and, and it is a quasi-town yeah, event. We that's the same size Can we not override yeah. some of well, these things? I don't things? know if we can or not, so I'm asking him. But that's, that's the same size banner that we've had in Hockington for the last several years for other things. And I don't remember getting any complaints about a banner up for a couple of weeks. So we can't override a zoning article because that's a town meeting vote. We don't run the show. The town meeting runs the show. You want to see? Um, do this? But what can we do? Pregnant pause. <laughs> we, we, we cannot encourage non-compliance with our zoning bylaws. Uh, I, I think this is a conversation that we've been having in the office um, with the applicant for a while now, uh, and we, we can continue this conversation offline. Well, can we get them in front of the ZBA sooner than later? Special permit applications have a notice requirement. So they could submit an application tomorrow? And we can try to get that on as soon as possible. But there is a public hearing notice requirement in the newspaper that does come before the hearing. But depending on when the board's meeting dates are, we can schedule that as soon as possible once that application comes in. So back to my more than one way to skin a cat. If she were to come in front of us and ask for two signs that would be directly underneath each other, that would not physically be connected as one, maybe a... But that's more expense for them. Yeah, but it might be a little bit more expensive, but if they do half the sign on one, half on the other, and have an eighth of an inch break between the two, it's gonna look the same and you don't have to wait a month. Uh, it could, I guess, but wouldn't that... It would, there's still, it's still connected the same way? I mean, even if it's strung one on top of the other, they still have to connect to the somehow. Same pole. Right, because if you look at that one, it's actually, there's a string that goes across, and then those connect onto the banner across the whole thing. Um, but I, I appreciate the outside of the box thinking of trying to, <laughs> to trying help you make it work. So and you got a six foot, basically three and three, and is that additional no. two feet What's when you need down two, a truck height? Two, two, two. Like no, no, he's saying two and two. Two and two. Two and Actually. 37 and a half by two by wow. 37 and a half. As I think you'd have to speak to this, but to the design, it, it just may not, you may not be able to read it if it's two and two, though, because of the design. Here's a you suggestion um, through the chair. The, the board may simply approve the banner as requested, subject to, oh. subject to the ZBA issuing the special permit, and then we'll take it from there. And you wouldn't have to come yeah, back. Yeah, but if we have a 30 us. day notice, <clears throat> okay, so that puts us to mid November, and they want to be on the poll on November 14th, we're already up against it. When's the next zoning meeting? All right, yeah. Next Wednesday. But, the, but there's, a, there's a delay. Okay, so I, I will make a motion that the Board of Selectmen approve the banner request as submitted uh, with the understanding that the town manager and the applicant will work with the ZBA to get a special permit process resolved or completed. That's Second. Fair. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? I don't think so. If is there a, wait, oh, hang on one sec. Is there a is there a fee for them to file for a special permit? There is. Can we waive that? No. Why? That we set all the fees. I believe the board of appeals can, can yeah. do that. They have to apply for that through the zoning board of appeals. Included in my motion is a recommendation that all fees be waived for the special permit. Accepted. Um, to the chair, one more comment. Um, uh, other than the, uh, during the marathon month, we suspend all the signage rules. As I, I remember, the, there's that one month where um, we suspend many of the, the signage rules, if I remember correctly from Zach. But for family day, we put up, a f we put up that larger banner are we going to run into something again next year because this i thought that that was the size that we were supposed to use we could bring something to town meeting to change the rule yeah so that's uh, i think we should definitely uh, can you get me on the uh, zach agenda for the next meeting they have so i can present this to zach i can work on that thank you all right i'm good all right so we got no other comments i think we're ready for a vote all in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
Any opposed? Okay. All set. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Amanda. Thank you. Thanks, Kelly. All right, so our next item is notice of taking. Street acceptance, Board of Selectmen will consider signing notices of taking for Cobbler's Way, Legacy Farm Seems South, and Singletary logical. Lane in accordance with Article 44 of the 2018 Town Meeting. Mr. Kamalo. Kind of self-explanatory, right? Yes, and, and Town Council has reviewed the notices and recommends approval. I think we're ready for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen vote pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 79, Section 7C, and Article 44 of the May 7, 2018 Annual Town Meeting to execute notices of taking relative to the orders of taking recorded on August 23, 2018 at the Middlesex South, Registry, Middlesex South District Registry of Deeds to accept and take ownership of the roadways known as Cobbler's Way, Legacy Farm South, and Singletary Way. Second. Okay, any other comments? Ready for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any opposed? Any objections? Extensions? It carries. All right, Mr. Kamalo, town manager report. Yes, um, only one item, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, with your permission. The 2019 Boston Marathon Invitational Entry Application Process. Uh, we, we presented a recommendation in your packet. Uh, the recommendation follows uh, the process that was outlined for the 2018 uh, Boston Marathon, and it is consistent with the town's marathon policy. Uh, in summary, what we're recommending is that the invitational entries be uh, made available to town departments, boards and committees that perform marathon functions who may distribute their entries uh, to organizations undertaking activities for the benefit of the town of Hockington, and then secondly, as we did in, I think, the past years, simply focus on organizations undertaking public service activities within the town of Hopkinton. In the past years, for the board's consideration, by way of history, the board did consider extending uh, entries to organizations that perform activities in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Also, based on prior experience, we are recommending that we attach a value of $5,000 per invitational entry. Uh, as you know, uh, from last year, the, the invitational entries raised a significant amount uh, to benefit the community, uh, and most of the entities that received the entries did raise more than $5,000. There were a couple uh, that raised less than $5,000. Uh, we are recommending that the minimum to be raised be $5,000. And then last but not least, uh, we have also um, in, the pre in, in the past asked that applicants apply for no more than five, I think based on last year's robust response from uh, town civic groups, the board may consider a different threshold Good. for applications. Good. Meaning a smaller threshold? Remember last year the board ended up giving just a single entry to each of each Right, so why do we but Yeah. Yeah. So as a way of managing expectations, the board may consider a lower number. Okay. Yeah. Good. Anything else? That's it. Um, so by in terms of the policy, the board has to formally adopt this this process. Okay. So I, um, I think it's gone pretty smooth the last several years. We do always pretty much wind up going with one uh, across the board with various applicants and maybe that doesn't make it for whatever reason, which hasn't been that often, I think, outside of town. A couple of times it's happened, but not inside of town. Um, I do think we should probably lower the number to, to seek no more than two numbers because the likelihood of them maybe getting two <coughs> is pretty remote. Um, but it doesn't completely tie our hands to give everybody just one either. Other than that, I'm, I'm good with what's been going on. You know, um, if I may through the chair, I think one of the things that we should also look at is if, if some of the organizations are coming to us where we might only have one to give, but they're getting lots of them from other organizations you know, and not allowing us the freedom to give it to people that don't have the ability to go anywhere else. Um, you know, that's, 
it's, you know, the, 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 I don't know. It's we only really have like 20 or 25 sometimes to give 22, and um, I don't know. It's something we should look at. Okay. In fact, if I may, um, I think if we look at the history of the invitational entries in town, we realize how valuable the entries are in general to town organizations. And also, one other thing that we have learned over the years is that through this process, we have actually um, enabled organizations to build their capacity for fund development. Wasn't it and close to 300 grand last year? Oh, yeah. It was substantial. Like 289 or something like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Plus, just, yeah. just for those that may not understand why we're spending so much time on this, last year alone, the numbers that we get from the BAA that we then dole out to these charities in Hopkinton, for, I think for the most, they were all Hopkinton charities, right? Yeah. They raised $289,000 one day last year. Mm -hmm. That's a ton of money for these organizations, which is great, but we gotta be careful because there's a significant value to these things. We gotta be, we gotta make sure it's done fairly. And we don't want them to be, we don't want them to be squandered. You know, if, there's, if there are organizations out there that, that don't have the, um, the ability or the training to, to get, you know, there, there are some organizations out there that, that can pull in eight, ten thousand dollars on some of these numbers. You know, if, if somebody gets one that, and they only get one or 2,000, um, either they have to, you know, get, get trained, because there are, you know, the, 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 the respite center and other places do train people on how to do, uh, how to do the fundraising. And it's important that, that, that we don't give a number to an organization, they just sell it for $1,000 or something when another organization could use it and get, uh, 10, 15, or what, what did uh, Semper Fi get 26,000 or something last year? The, uh, I know the Shriners pulled in 25,000 from, from, from another number from another town. Exactly, that's, that's, I think that's the key, that part of the philosophy behind distributing the entries has been building capacity uh, for organizations to do their fundraising. And I think that's why by the end of the day, number one, we need to emphasize that there are opportunities to receive training and support, uh, especially for organizations that may not be able to do the fundraising. So we can use local organizations to do that, and the BAA also has offered uh, um, an avenue for training local organizations on fundraising. And secondly, related to that is because we intentionally, as part of the thinking behind this concept, wanted to grow the capacity of local organizations to do fundraising, we cannot now then turn around and say, you have enough numbers, we can't give you any numbers. So my suggestion is that I think let's celebrate the fact that some local organizations are able to get a higher number of, mm -hmm. of invitation entries. It's through, a, 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 I think, a good faith effort on their part. And also, we know very well, the organizations that have come before the board really depend on, on, on these funds. I know we don't want to create dependency, but also if there's a need to be met, the goal here is to meet the need. One of the things that was an eye-opening thing for me last year is I looked at the spreadsheet and I said, all right, well, these people didn't really make that much money, so maybe we get rid of those people and give these other people that make more money, more numbers. But when you think about it, some of those charities are giant that are, have those that are looking for second and third numbers. And the ones that don't quite make the 5,000 are more of a, they're a smaller charity, but they're more homegrown. And they're more, probably more what that, that charity thing is, is uh, set up to be for. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, there's a, there's a good medium right there where you can, you know, it would be great if EMC could get you $500,000 for a number, but if the, uh, you know, whatever, the ambulance fund decided to, to get one and, and it raised you 3,500 bucks or something like that, it probably would, would go more towards the, the town and, and more beneficial towards the, uh, the town's people than one of those larger ones, so. Yes. Yeah. So we have to put, if I may, we also have to make sure that people understand that they're competitive. 
it's you know, just as the race is competitive, you know, getting getting one of these charity numbers for your organization and 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 working hard to make the most for your organization is the important thing. Mm -hmm. That, that do not, as I said before, don't squander this, this gift that can really fund stuff and, and get out there and learn how to do the fundraising and, and find out find the avenues to make the most money. Mr. Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the 2019 Boston Marathon Invitational Waiver process as discussed this evening to include uh, adjusting the uh, maximum request for applications uh, per organization to two and that a review by the Board of Selectmen and its professional team uh, of past performance uh, be part of the evaluation process. Second. Very good one. All right. Any other comments on that motion? Elaine, you think that motion's in line? I, I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, I think we're ready for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Questions? Carries. All right, liaison reports, board invitees. Mr. Sistari. Mr. Sistari, he's, he's, he's not here. That's the same neighborhood. Okay, he's across the street. Mr. Polico. Uh, um, yeah, I, I, I attended the um, Chamber of Commerce uh, meeting for, as part of the 2020-2030, uh, the, the whatever they, they're calling it now. <clears throat> and... Um, they wanted me to mention a couple of things coming up on Thursday, October 18th. There's a um, uh, show, gallery showroom anniversary celebration, and all are invited. There's the Chamber Social Networking event on the 24th at, at Cornell's Pub. The uh, Downtown Corridor Project meeting is uh, Friday, October 26th at 8 a.m. at uh, 77 Main Street on the third floor. That's uh, the, the downtown corridor, corridor project is very big and that people should uh, get to that. The uh, <laughs> DPW ribbon cutting ceremony has been uh, moved again to November 3rd at 9 a.m. And that will be at the... Uh... Oh, that's canceled again. Okay, so let's just change that one more time. The uh, uh, chamber holiday party is Thursday, November 29th from 5 to 8 p.m. at the HCA. And as we were discussing with the sign, the uh, holiday stroll will be uh, Saturday, December 1st from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. beginning at the Common. So that's, a, that's something we're starting this year and it's just gonna be great for all of the uh, businesses downtown and for people to see the, uh, the downtown decorated and, and uh, to uh, partake in the hospitality of all the local uh, businesses. Make sure you park where you're allowed. I don't want anyone to get towed. <laughs> All right, I got none. Brian? Um, the new turf field complex is opening, a soft opening uh, tomorrow with a, I believe it's a uh, women's soccer game or field hockey game being played tomorrow. Oh, that's senior night of soccer tomorrow. Okay, so they did the soft opening this evening um, on the new field. So <laughs> bottom line is the fields are up and running. There is going to be a more formal ceremony at some point to welcome the new asset to town. But uh, uh, the fields are working. Great. All is well. Great. Anyone else have anything else? All right. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. In favor. Aye. 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 Good night. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.